All right, this is our last video here for section 4.8 with centers of mass, but we're going to take a look at how we could actually generalize the idea of finding centers of mass to three-dimensional objects. So take a look here. The definition that we have says, suppose that the density of a solid object that occupies the region E, that's in three space, is continuous. So again, imagine I plugged in X comma Y comma Z and I could immediately find the density at any point on the solid. So the center of mass of this object would be given by the point X bar comma Y bar comma Z bar. And you'll notice that I have pretty much the same formula as we did last time. I have the same formula for mass, but now it's a triple integral of the density. My X bar, Y bar, and Z bar are still one over the mass, now a triple integral, and I still have X times the density or Y times the density, and now a new Z times the density. Hopefully, excuse me, this uh, serves as an easy extension of the ideas we talked about in the last example. So let's take a look here at example number two. Can I find the center of mass of the solid that occupies the region bounded by all of these functions? And specifically, which has the following density. So notice here, the density function is just one at all points. So no matter where you are in the solid, you always have density one. Now the hard part here is going to be trying to understand what exactly the solid looks like. Again, I'm gonna to have to be setting up a triple integral here, which means I need to be able to visualize the solid, thinking about my walls, my floors and ceilings, so I can understand how I can communicate this region. So I'm gonna start by trying to draw a picture of the region E. So maybe I'll draw something kind of like this. Okay, so here's Y, X, and Z. I'll even kind of give Y a little bit more negative space because I might need to draw some of that there and give a little more negative space as well. All right, so let's see. We know that we have first the graph X equals Y squared. Well, that's not too bad. We know how to sketch that. That would look like something like this kind of sketching out into space like that. And um, we also have uh, z equals zero as a bound. So if z is gonna be equal to zero, that means that, um, well, that's, that, that's the xy plane. So this is kind of giving me some sort of a floor. I also have that x is equal to one is some sort of a limiting value. So I have here x is one. I kind of can't go past this particular value here. Right? So I can't go past that. So you can already kind of see the floor of my region starting to take shape. I have this kind of parabola region down there, and I can't go below it, but I can't go above it. The question just is how high. So I've already kind of taken care of all the bits that are underlined in red. The last part that I have to do is to think about x is equal to z. Well, if x is equal to z, then that's kind of just like, well, it says that x and z have the same coordinate at all points. So that would mean that at 0, 0, 0, x and z have the same coordinate. When I'm out at x is a 1, then that means that there has to be a z coordinate of 1 at that point. So I'll kind of be able to tell that like over here, I can kind of get this happen on my solid, right? That like I have this kind of... Um, uh, rectangular side of my solid sitting here. And I can start to see that as I begin to walk backwards towards the value of z, right, if I grab these points and I walked back or walk back towards the origin, I should be able to kind of slowly move down towards that origin. Notice, like, imagine if I was starting at the top of the corner point right here and I walked backwards along this curve. I would kind of have something that curves down. Same thing when I start up here. I would have something that kind of curves down. So I have maybe some sort of a solid that looks something kind of like this. And you can see a, a more refined picture in the notes that are posted online. But this is maybe the solid that I have. So maybe I can start to describe the region. I'll say that we have E as a bunch of X comma Y comma Z points. But I want to understand their restrictions. One thing that I can see right away is that, um, well, I know that I have to have z greater than or equal to zero, right? We said that that was the floor. We know that we have to have x less than or equal to one. We also know that we need to have, we need to stay kind of inside the parabola. So we need to make sure that x is going to be 
actually greater than or equal to y squared. Notice I could actually kind of like test this. I need to make sure that like a point like 1 comma 0 down here in the picture is actually inside the region. And that would be that way if I have x greater than or equal to y squared. If that inequality was flipped, that would not actually be the case. I have one final identity that I need to, or um, criteria I need in here, and that is that I need x to always be greater than or equal to z. That is, z always has to be less than or equal to the x value. So I can kind of see here that I have these bounds that are helping me understand the region. And of course, I can start to immediately think about if I'm going to set up a triple integral, maybe I can establish a ceiling. So can you see here what would act as my ceiling and what would act as my floor? So then what would that mean I could state about bounds on z? If you need to, pause the video for a moment, see if maybe you can try to set up um, a triple integral here and then deal with the associated projections. All right, so here's what I got for my bounds. I would say that the floor here seems to be z coordinate. Oh, that's how low you can go. And the ceiling is kind of given by that slanted plane that I'm going to have kind of up here this slope down backwards, and that's the value x. So these seem to be the bounds that I ultimately have. Then I can go ahead and say that we project E into the xy plane. And when I do that, I should be able to see that parabola shape that we had that kind of opened like this. Again, we know that it stopped at 1. So here's my region D. And again, I can see it down here in this picture. Right? It's this region down there. So there's my region D. That's the projection down to the xy plane. I would like to go ahead and bound that or describe it fully. And that seems pretty easy to do as well. I could easily say here, that um, my x value seems to be bounded. On the top side, it's bounded by 1. And on the bottom side, it's bounded by y squared. And then I can see that my y values seem to kind of freely range here from negative 1 to positive 1, as those would be the highest and lowest points that I could reach in the region. So with all of that, I can now easily go ahead and set up each of my individual integral computations. I know that I'm going to need to find the mass. And so in order to do that, I know that I can go ahead and integrate 1, which is my density, and I'm going to do dz. It looks like I'd have to do dx and then dy. So I'm going to have to go 0 to x y squared to 1, negative 1 to 1, and I'd have to crunch that out. If I was to set up all of my other integrals, notice that I would get exactly the same bounds on all of them. Oops, y squared to 1, 0 to x, but I'm just going to have to change my uh, function that I'm integrating because it's going to turn into x times 1, dz dx dy. For my y bar, still going from negative 1 to 1, y squared to 1, 0 to x, but now it's y times 1. And for my z bar, I'm going to get these values with z times 1. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can actually try to crunch out what the value of each one of these integrals is going to look like. Obviously here, um, oops, it looks like I forgot to put in that that first integral is super important because I'm going to have to do one over the mass in front of each of these. So that way I can fully calculate them out. But I'll, again, I'll ask you to go ahead and pause the video so you can try to go ahead and crunch these out on your own. And then you can check back with my answers when you hit play. OK, so my answers are going to look like I got 4 fifths for the mass. I got 5 sevenths for the x bar. 
zero for the y bar and five fourteenths for the z bar. So the center of mass of the solid is five sevenths zero five fourteenths. And again, I should be able to go back to the region and just and understand that I actually crunched this out at least in a reasonable way. Notice if I go to five sevenths, that's moving down the x axis, not all the way to one. Maybe it's like somewhere over here. And then I could say I don't go anywhere left or right, which makes perfect sense if I want to kind of balance this thing out. And I go up five fourteenths. So maybe from here, I go up a little bit, and maybe right in there is where my center of mass actually resides. All right. This will obviously take a little bit of practice to get used to. And again, we can see the idea that triple integrals aren't really going anywhere. The notion of double and triple integrals are so important for the remainder of this course. In the next set of videos, we'll start to talk about chapter five, and we will see that double integrals and triple integrals will become of extreme importance in the latter half of that chapter. All right, if you've got questions, comments, concerns on this section, please by all means feel free to shoot me an email or see me in virtual office hours.